Welcome. This video will be a programming session. I am working on a couple of features for Budget Warden, a personal finance React Native application. It's actually a React Native and web application, but in today's video, I will be focusing on the mobile application and one of its features. I have it running in this iOS simulator right here. It's a React Native app, so it can run on Android and iOS. If I log in, I'll show you the feature I'm going to be working on. So after you log in, you have these uh, budget items, which are categories in which you will spend for a given budget period, which is a monthly thing. Currently, it's a budget is monthly, and you can create these budget periods and switch between them. And the entire, of course, context and categories will change depending on the actual budget you've selected. You can create custom categories and on the side, of course, we have some reporting with charts and transactions. Now, what I have worked on is you can create budgets. Through here, create new budget. You can copy a previous month and create a new budget for a following month. But there was no functionality to actually delete budget periods, which was a problem, naturally. And um, the user experience I wanted to mimic if I go to the home screen was something very, very familiar in iOS applications. This is the native reminders application from Apple. If I create a couple of reminders, I can delete them by swiping left. I have delete. I can also over swipe to delete them, but I don't want that because in my case, I would even want a, an, a confirmation dialog as budget periods are something quite important. Now, let me just uh, go back to the app. So I did implement that yesterday, actually. I was able to do that functionality and you can delete the budget. Let me actually remove April's budget or better yet, create a new one. Okay. Create a new budget and we can delete it. And we have this loading animation and then it deletes the budget. Now that is implemented, but it's very specific for this view. It's currently, let me open. So I have this environment right here. Um, I'm using Tmux, the bar at the bottom, if you're not familiar, this is a terminal multiplexer. It's basically a, a tool that allows you to run multiple terminal sessions and switch between them. You can think of them of Tmux like taps, but it has more functionality than that. And it's more convenient. So I have two sessions currently. Uh, one is ZSH, which is my terminal, and one is Node, this process that's running right here, the Expo React Native app that I have opened. So I will switch to zero, and this is my actual application folder, a BW mobile app for Budget Warden mobile app, and I will open this in UVM. Okay, we have some plugin updates, that's fine. Now, Here's what I meant that this is very specific. Currently, that component, which is responsible for the swiping animation and the delete button behind it, is in source components, of course, and it's called swipeable budget item. That's not very abstract and extremely specific. It basically, here's how it works. It has a couple of props. Um, it accepts a budget, a very specific item, of data and it has on press on delete and on interaction start events and some props that help with the user interface this is to uh, the swipeable budget item is each individual one of these buttons so we need group first or group last to know if we should round the corners at the top or at the bottom is loading is a prop used to show the loader instead of a delete button because the actual deletion happens outside of this component. This component only uh, has a prop that is on delete so that it can tell its parent that deletion should happen. We have reset position interface. This is used to reset the position of other items. If I expand this one, after I expand another one, it resets positions of all other items because this is basically the native iOS behavior 
and it's natural to just um, have only one item open. It gets confusing if you can open no items. And as I mentioned, this is extremely specific, uh, but it shouldn't be really because uh, the, the big thing about it is this animation. That's a pan gesture right here. It has an own start. Um, it has an event and then it just translates. That's basically it. It's not extremely complicated. It supports only delete and I don't need to support anything else for now. So that part will remain the same. So a couple of problems here is that it, this is tightly coupled to budget and I cannot use it, as I mentioned, for these cards right here. For example, I would like them to be deletable as well. They are deletable right now, but if you open them and click this button. And if I support that user experience here, I believe it should be supported in all places where it makes sense. And the other place where it makes sense is transactions. Uh, because they are transactional items, you would frequently want to delete them. And currently you have to open them and delete. I mean, that pattern is fine. I, I won't remove that pattern. I'm okay with it, but I want to support the swiping gesture as well. And these are the two places where I need to implement that. Uh, the application is quite minimal in that sense, uh, but we need to be able to support that. And we can't have a tightly coupled budget here for just this use case. So this component needs to change. Let's test if we can, um, if Quadcode can help us with that. For those of you unfamiliar, Quadcode is the new uh, not the new, but the updated uh, coding agent assistant from Entropic. They released uh, a couple of updates to it with the Cloud Sonnet 4 model, and it's currently one of the best Agentic AI tools. Um, it's kind of like if you're familiar with Cursor or Windsurf, not integrated in an ID. What we want to prompt it is swipeable budget item. Let's select the file. We need to, let's uh, tell it, rework this component to a more abstract. Let's give it more specific instructions. I don't want to let it improvise. Uh, it's always great to ask Cloud Code to give you a plan because you can tweak some small things before wasting uh, tokens and time. I intentionally did not prompt it to immediately also update transactions and budgets. I want to do it uh, step by step. Okay, let's see what it proposed. Implementation plan uh, renames that, removes budget specific logic. Yeah, that's exactly what we wanted. Children, additional text and arrow. Because we don't have to have this middle state where it will break that functionality and only update the component. Let's also ask it to refactor the select budget file. So this is the first purpose changed. I'd like to review them carefully. Uh, yeah, that's expected. The props we accepted. Uh, renaming. And here we have props arrow. Yeah, everything is exactly as expected. Quite a simple change, nothing major really. And now it's updating my select budget component. Let's see that. That's expected. Renamings and here we don't pass budget anymore. We do that. Well, that is perfect actually. Admittedly, well, it wasn't that hard of a refactoring, but okay. So let's check first. I will switch to my node process, reload the app. Okay, I needed to rerun the simulator. It happens sometimes, but let me see. Everything seems to be working as expected. I'll create a new budget and delete it just to make sure everything end to end seems to work well. Yeah, of course we need more thorough testing. Let's now check the code. Although I did see the diffs and everything was as expected. So the component is now called swipeable touchable box. The props are as we expected and yeah, everything here is the same, except that we pass children and a couple of props here. Okay. Now the next step is to let's do transactions first. 
and I will go to cloud code. Um, let me first see how was the transactions view code. Transactions index. Yeah, just check it quickly what it does. Yeah, we care about this right here, this map. It should become a swipeable, uh, touchable box component. Okay. The transactions delete functionality is already implemented in transactions details. We should use the same delete transaction item. Okay. The delete logic is already implemented in uh, basically the transactions swipes. Let's see if it can do that change. It's a little bit more involved, but we'll see how it does. So we did figure out it needs to update the transactions, of course, delete dialog, ref management for resetting swipe positions. This is great. Judging by the plan, I think it will implement the correct thing. Okay, let's see the change. That is expected, the dialog. And here's the important stuff. Uh, did it import delete? Yeah, delete transaction from the state. So handle delete transaction is correct. Reset other items is also correct. Well, let's check this out. Okay, we have, that is pretty good. Did it import this loading from the store? Yes, the store uses this is loading state uh, because after you start deleting the transaction, meaning when the API request is sent to the server, it will set this loading to true because the model is loading actually. Okay, that's absolutely correct. Let's check it out. Um, I'll go to my node terminal, reload the app and log in again. It, I have logged in, it just needs to authenticate and let's see if it will work without touching anything. Wow. Let's try to delete it. I mean, I've had some success with other coding agents sometimes, but this really is very accurate if you give it specific instructions and that excites me a lot because I mean, I can do a lot for my application this way. Let me just, um, again, double check everything, double, triple check everything because I don't trust it that much. There isn't much to to say about this, it, it's quite good. I could refactor these a bit, but honestly, two lines in line is not that bad. Reset other items is used in how many places? Two, when you start interaction and when you press. Actually, why would it reset other items when you press? Let me think about that. That's really not necessary because when I press, I get navigated. I don't really, this handles this case. This one is opened and I click this one and it starts with setting. That's actually annoying. Mm, I don't think I want it to be honest. The only thing that's that I have as a question is if I expand that open and close. Okay. Yeah. For that case, it's better to have it. Otherwise not a big deal. I don't have much to, to do here, to be honest. Additional testing is needed, but I'll do that after we implement all of the changes. And now let's do the category budget. Uh, these are called category budgets because in the uh, this is a budget, the monthly item for which you create categories, transactions, track your finances. These are essentially categories, food, emergency fund, salary. Um, you can have many other categories here if you look at the real budget. Um, but category budgets are, categories can be the same between budgets. They are other database items. And category budget is a database entity that connect budget to category. So that's how I call it in my model. Give me a couple of seconds. I'll take a quick break and then we'll continue. All right, so we were right here. Let's continue. I wanted to implement the change to this, um, these items, the category budgets, as I call them. And here we have them in the index view uh, by each individual type income. And here we have touchable box. 
which we need to convert. Then we have expense, savings, and debt. Okay, that's in budget index. Let's prompt cloud prompt. Uh, cloud code. Sorry. <laughs> Let's prompt it. I'll give it the file. Let me check where the delete method is implemented. This is the budget slice of the model. Uh, this is a stand store basically. And we have delete budget. And we can again use the category budget details for reference because we have that delete button with the confirmation. Let's see how it does. I expect it to do perfectly. I did not expect it to be as perfect. Um, admittedly, when I was implementing the swipeable touchable box component, it did quite a few mistakes and I needed to refactor a lot. This time I've barely written any code so far, which is quite awesome. Okay, here's the first diff it proposes and it seems correct, yes. It is correct. In the second diff, this time we're doing delete confirmation dialog. Great. And seeing as the first category is correct, the others are just repetitive code, so it will do them well as well. All right. Let's check how it did. Judging by the code and the diffs I reviewed, it actually should be perfect. I think I need to reward it because reward is taking unusually long. Sometimes Expo freezes and I need to restart the watcher. But it's not a big deal really. And it builds pretty fast on M2, M3 Max. Okay. Well, seems to be working flawlessly in terms of animation. Let's add a test category and I'll remove it. I can't um, really criticize it in any way, to be honest. There's just nothing I would really change that much. Let's, um, let's still check. Although I reviewed the diffs, I am very diligent in checking because you never know what could sneak in there. Everything is working just fine. Wow, I'm very impressed. I expected to write a lot more code today for this feature specifically. But that is impressive. Um, that's for sure the most impressive agentic AI I have used out of Cursor, Windsurf, Avanti with many models and um, uh, I also tried, uh, I believe, Codex. Yeah, OpenAI's Codex, but the models of OpenAI are just not up to up to it with the Quad models for development specifically. I admit, Quad code was impressive today. Yes, it did not invent anything. All the code was actually available for reference for this feature. I it was already implemented right here. And even the delete handlers were available for it to use. But still, the accuracy with which it did not make mistakes is quite impressive because I personally use these tools just for that, to help me with boilerplate a bit, to ease my work a bit, and just help me with motion when I know what I want to write and I don't want to type it out sometimes. They can help with that. And Accuracy is extremely important for that in order to be productive. Otherwise, if I need to refactor most of the code it generates, it doesn't make much sense. And so far with Cloud Code, I've had great success in that I don't need to refactor a lot of the code it, may, it generates. And it does make me more productive in cases like this one. If you enjoy the content, feel free to subscribe. I'll make more videos about uh, developer tools and coding sessions like this one. Take care.